When it comes to controlling the gases, it's not just the water temperature and knowing your beans. It's about knowing how to pour knowing your beans. The pour itself makes all the difference. Whether you pour fast, pour slow, the amount of gases that's given off matches differently. So today, I wanted to talk about how the pour can change your game. If you guys are new here, my name is Vincent and I'm the head roaster for Tails Coffee. And if you love educational and experimental videos, make sure to subscribe and hit that bell notification so you can get the latest updates on my newest techniques. So I'm a firm believer that 80% of the coffee is actually just knowing and understanding how to brew it and then 20% is actually brewing it. So now that we've talked about how gases are and how like the water temperature affects it, what we now need to understand is how we change, how we prepare the coffee bed, and then how we pour for it. Now, for example, some of the coffees that give off less gases, actually most of the coffees that give off less gases, they tend to sink quicker. And that's because with less carbon dioxide, the water doesn't have as much issues extracting the flavors out of the coffees. And thus, we actually get one that extracts faster and then it sinks faster. Now on the flip side, coffees that give off more gases because they repel the water more, it takes longer for the water to kind of bring everything out. And that's why when we pour, even through the middle of the pour, a lot of the darker grinds start floating up. And those darker grinds signifies we haven't actually fully extracted all the flavors from it. So what we need to do is use lots of agitation to kind of press it down. Well, maybe not lots, but more than ones that don't give off a lot of gases. So for the quicker sinking coffees, what we want to do in our head is to really pour all the water faster. And because you're doing that, you're gonna create a lot of force. So what we're gonna to want to do to set the coffee bed is to have a deeper V. In your mind, what I want you guys to kind of visualize is when the water hits the bottom in the middle of it, you want it to kind of lift and pull all the grinds to the top. Now this prevents it from clogging earlier into the brew, which prevents it from over extracting at the top and under extracting at the bottom. When you pour, you want to start in the middle, kind of start gentle, but then you want to speed up really like relatively quickly. By relatively early, I mean like within the first 50 grams of water. You want to be able to lift all the coffees up to the edges. On the other side, when we have darker, kind of more gassy coffees, you want to set a very like shallow divot. Now the idea is when you pour the water, it needs to catch it, but then because the water is getting repelled because of all the carbon dioxide, if you set one too deep, you're gonna get the first couple of drips coming out really quickly without much flavor. So by having it set in a higher state, when we pour, even if it's getting pushed out, it's getting pushed lower and lower and lower, and it's gonna be activating the stuff underneath it. So as the water kind of trickles down and through it, we're gonna get more extracted at an earlier stage. And so you want to move to the edges more because this way you can actually saturate everything as quickly as possible. Now, instead of having to lift it up from the beginning, it will naturally lift itself up because the gases kind of push away from each other and repel each other. And so you're gonna get this more voluptuous kind of like dripper inside. And so we're gonna to want to move more and do more, use more agitation to make sure we press all of the darker grinds down. So as you can imagine, the pouring speed will also play an, an important role in choosing how much agitation we have throughout the brew. Now, generally speaking, pouring faster can create more force, but because you're pouring faster and you don't have enough time to move as much, you're only creating force in a smaller amount of area. Just imagine it this way. You only have 20 seconds to pour everything, and as the coffees lift, if you're pouring too quickly, it's gonna be lifting faster than the beans can be moving around for you to actually make sure you saturate everything. So sometimes pouring a little bit slower creates more agitation. And I find that some of the slowest pours create the most agitation. But when you pour closer and slow at the beginning, because nothing is currently moving, it actually creates the most gentle agitation. But as you start to add more water in, a slow pour can create a lot of agitation. So I tend to pour a little bit faster 
as we brew. In the beginning, we always start slow to create that gentle and it just kind of flushes the bottom without forcing any of the liquids through. You want it to be caught and just spend a little bit of time. So we always want to start slow, especially in the first five seconds, and then speed up. Now, the amount we speed up differs based on the beans. Like I said, with the lighter coffees that sink a little bit more, we're going to want to pour a little bit faster. Where we pour is also very important. If you don't move and only stay in the middle, you cause very little agitation. And so for some of the coffees that sink really, really quickly, you actually do not ever need to even move your kettle. You just pour straight down the middle. But for most of us, if we're working with mediums or like light to mediums, especially like naturals or anaerobics that naturally have more gases, we want to be moving at a rate where we're pressing all the grinds down. When you do a flush, which is when you run your water along the edge, you also create a lot of agitation and you can slowly work your way back into the middle. Why don't we get to the other side and let me show you guys what I am talking about. Because a lot of this is just a lot of words that probably don't make a lot of sense. But just hear me out. When we put in context, look for these cues and it should actually teach you guys a lot. I'm excited. So for my first coffee, I've actually opted into something that's lighter. Um, we're gonna start with one that sinks a little bit quicker. And today's coffee is actually gonna be one from Cupping Room. Now a friend of mine brought this in for me. Um, and he was just in Hong Kong because he was having some, he had just to visit. Um, now, Cupping Room, if you guys are not familiar with them, they're amazing. I have actually started my coffee journey, I think, from them. Um, them and Coffee Academics in Hong Kong, these are the two places that really started me off about 10, 12 years ago. Um, but anyways, this is a coffee from Ethiopia, which is known to sink a little bit quicker. And then it's a wash process, which makes it sink even quicker. Um, so yeah, they have these beautiful bags. So this is definitely a very quick sinking coffee. Um, and so we're going to be talking about that. It's a light roast as well. So when we have this combination of coffees, I've got 19 grams in here. Um, we're just going to start and stir it and break all the clumps. So what I'm doing here is I set myself a pretty deep V as you guys can see. Um, like I've said before in the last video, or in many of my videos, I actually don't change my grind size. These are all medium fines, about 350 microns-ish. The idea of stirring is to make sure you break up all the clumps, make sure there's no clumping. And at the same time, sometimes the finer grinds will naturally go to the walls anyways. Um, and we don't want to disturb them too much, so we're going to brew in a way where we maximize our time in the middle. And this is what we're going to start with. We're literally going to start with a deeper V and as you guys can see, it's, a, it's almost a hole in there. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start by pouring right down the middle really gently. Oh, I missed. Well, good enough. And then, as you can see, there's not a lot of gas that's being given off. The color is just very light. And so what we're gonna do is we're just going to pour straight down the middle. And we're gonna go for 200 and, I don't know, 70 grams of water because 19 times 0.5 sounds to be like that. And as you can see, now the darker grinds have started to float up because we want to marginally agitate it. We're just gonna get that done and then give it a quick stir. Now, I want you guys to notice that there's not a lot of um, crema to it. It's very thin. And you're gonna notice, and you'll know when your coffee sinks, when this line starts to show up. Can you guys see the line on the edge, around the edge? When that line starts to show up, it means the coffee has already started to sink down to the bottom. Now notice, I barely used any agitation. I poured straight down the middle and I gave it a quick stir. And all of that was enough to create enough agitation so that the grinds are already being extracted. I poured fairly quickly too. Um, I didn't look at the timer, but I poured pretty quickly. So you can see now right here, if I were to actually, um, maybe we can disturb the bed. The mound is already there, the coffee sides are at the bottom. And 
there's not really any indication that it's an under-extracted coffee at all. Um, I've talked about this before, but an indication that a coffee is well extracted is the middle is nice and granular. And then the sides are more pasty. Um, I'm getting a refractometer to prove this to you guys, but for the time being, you guys should just trust me. Um, if there are floating grinds on the side of the walls, large particles on the walls means you have under extraction. This particular coffee, you can see there's not a lot sitting on the sides, so it's not an under extracted coffee at all. In fact, all the extraction is done in the middle. So this is actually a very well brewed coffee just based on what we're looking for. Um, as odd as it sounds, I hope the logic makes sense. Now let's look and start with it. Let's go and use a darker coffee now. So the next coffee we will be working with is the Lonely Chair Coffee. Now I've, um, this is what coffee I roasted myself. It's coffee from Guatemala. It's actually a coffee that's supposed to showcase strength and comfort. Um, it's a medium roast and it gives a medium amount of gases. So um, let's get ourselves. Lost my grinds for a sec. Um, our grinds, same grind size. Um, we've got some stragglers on the side. We've got 18 grams in here. So we're gonna finish at about 270 again for the one to 15. Um, once again, you're gonna use a chopstick. We're going to stir to make sure all the grinds have hit the sides. Um, and then I'm gonna give it a quick tap because I do want to pack it so I don't want the first drip to come out so quickly. So it's gonna look like that. Now the divot this time isn't as deep, it's not a full hole. Um, we have something like this. This is kind of what you're gonna be looking for. And so for this one, because there's more gases, um, it, we have to use more agitation. So as we brew, just watch how the darker grinds flow to the top. So we always start quite gently in the middle. And you can already see right off the bat that there's still a lot of like darker stuff. So this darker stuff signifies that it's repelling the water and you want to work your way to the edges earlier because that causes a lot of agitation, right? And once we kind of get back into the middle, you're gonna see them floating back up once again. See that? And that just means we need to go back out to the edges one more time. And we've hit the 270, oh, right on the dot. And then we're gonna give it a quick stir once again to kind of just make sure we fully extract everything. And this is, when you, when you start to see it start sinking, you can see that the water level is starting to show up on the edges. Now this water line actually showed up a little bit later than the Ethiopian, which means the Ethiopian actually sinks really, really quickly. Pouring faster actually causes a little bit less agitation because you lift all the grinds up so quickly. And so when you pour, I want you guys to be more aware of where the darker stuff is and how much agitation you actually need to cause to make sure everything has sank down. So now that we've hit the finish, um, as you guys can see, about two minutes into here. And this is how we know once again that we've got ourselves a great brew. Look, look at the finish. There's no grinds on the edges, right? There's no floaters on the edges. Um, just a little bit of a paste on the side to show all the microfines have been stuck to the walls and that prevents the clogging and that prevents the water from from side channeling and running through the paper filter. And then the middle is nice and granular. So um, I hope this shows you guys, guys how pouring can change and understanding your pour can change um, how you extract your coffees. So let's get to the other side and kind of just do our final thoughts on this. So I hope understanding the pour helps you guys with how you brew your coffees. If you guys haven't liked this video already, please leave me a thumbs up. Um, but as a recap, just make sure that you press all the grinds down and you understand how much coffee, how much gases your coffee is giving off. The amount of gases you have changes the way you have to pour. 
Remember, darker coffees need to be set at a higher divot so that you don't, or a higher, a flatter bed to start with because the water repels it and you want to have longer duration. And because it's more porous, it's easier to kind of just flush through throughout the whole brew. But flip side, with lighter coffees, you want to set a deeper divot. You don't want to pour with as much agitation because the lighter coffees sink much quicker. And a quicker sinking coffee can clog. You don't want to see clogging. You kind of want to keep it around the two minutes for a brew. It's all you really need to brew a good coffee. The only thing that signifies your coffee is done brewing or all the flavors are extracted is when the coffee sinks. So when you pour multiple times with pulse pours or blooms and stuff like that, that causes a lot of agitation. That causes your grinds to sink much earlier. So maybe you've already fully extracted or maybe because it's so pasty already, it's hard for you to extract. And that's why I like to use finer grinds and then change the way I pour to make sure I fully extract everything in the shortest amount of time possible. So if you guys haven't, thank you very much for watching. Um, hope you guys liked the video. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.